This week we continue our Lab 304 series on science and research with a special look at underground West Virginia. No, this isn't a show about coal mining. We're exploring another subterranean realm, caves. Hundreds of miles of interconnected passageways running under parts of our state. These caves have a lot to tell us about our past, present, and future. And both cavers and scientists continue to explore and discover new things from our caves. First, producer Chuck Frostick takes us where the sun never shines, underground West Virginia. There is nothing like on a beautiful sunshiny day, putting on dirty coveralls, knee pads, and a helmet, and crawling into a hole in the ground. You know you're going to get wet. You know you're going to get muddy. And you know it's going to be cold. And did I mention it's going to be dark? Completely dark. This is a place where you want to know you have a reliable light source and two backup lights, just in case. When you can be miles underground, you've got to be prepared. Cavers are a unique, some would say odd, group of people. I'm one of them. I've walked, stooped, crawled, slithered, climbed, descended, and swam, sometimes for hours, to be able to see firsthand a little explored world full of beauty and wonder. Like me, George Dasher has been a passionate caver for over 30 years. Dasher is a geologist with the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection and a longtime member of the West Virginia Association for Cave Studies, headquartered in Rennick. Caving is very much a scientific sport, and people are, there's people that are very much into the science part of the sport, not the sport sport of the sport. And like all sports, you know, some people like to play basketball, some people like to play football. Um, it's just there's a certain type of people that are drawn to caving. Um, they like to explore, they like to see the unknown, they like to challenge themselves physically, and as I said, they like to do the science. Another caver turned geologist is Bill Balfour, executive director of the West Virginia Speleological Survey and the official keeper of the West Virginia Caves database. It's vast. I mean, there's a lot of cave in this, in this uh, state. There's uh, approximately 500 miles of mapped cave in underground West Virginia. West Virginia has about 43, more than 4,300 known caves. We have a large quantity and quality compared to the rest of the country. And people come here from all over the east, actually from all over the world. I've caved with people from Ireland and Britain too, to go caving in West Virginia. We're in Greenbrier County, and Greenbrier County has the most known caves of any county in the state. We've got about 1,300, more than 1,300 known caves at this time. But not all of West Virginia is cavernous. The limestone in West Virginia is mostly found along the eastern side, and the limestone is what forms the cave. Cabell County, Kanawha County, uh, the western and the central counties have mostly sandstone and coal. It's an accident of deposition. It's not a rule. But it just so happens in West Virginia where there's coal, there's no good limestone, and when there's limestone, there's no good coal. We have a very pure limestone that underlays the valley called the Greenbrier limestone. And it ranges from uh, 600 to 800 feet in thickness, and it just will develop caves like crazy. It's a wonderful limestone that uh, gets dissolved out by groundwater. Uh, we have some of the longest caves in the world, one of the biggest concentrations of long caves in the world, and we're also one of the two areas, the other being the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, where organized caving was started in this country. We have a lot of caves. We have good quantity and good quality of caves. 
where um, why Colorado is the scheme. Many West Virginia caves are regularly studied by scientists doing biological, hydrological, and even pharmacological research. Greg Springer is a professor of geology at Ohio University and an avid caver. His research utilizing cave formations has confirmed studies that have attributed extreme climate fluctuations in the past to decreased solar activity. Ours is the first conclusive uh, evidence that in fact solar output affects droughts in North America. We've been studying climate using stalagmites obtained from caves and this is a stalagmite from Buckeye Creek Cave in West Virginia. They grow over time starting here gradually lengthening and as they grow then they're recording climate because the water is obtained from the surface, the rain, the snow, etc. And what we found is that in stalagmites, uh, in a stalagmite that is 7,000 years old, there is a history of century-long droughts. And in the last 7,000 years, there have been uh, approximately seven century-long droughts. Caves can also tell us not just about the past, but our present. Many West Virginians live on karst land. Karst is a German term used to describe land which is underlain by cave-forming limestone. Those people really need to know where their groundwater flows because polluted groundwater, for instance, an overturned tank truck leaking fuel or chemicals into a stream, can pollute a large area rapidly. Karst water is simply a stream of water that flows into the cave. There's no filtration, there's no delay um, of the water by flowing through sandstone or shale. The end result is the water flows extremely quickly and comes out unfiltered a lot of times undiluted. The contamination that goes in is the same that comes out, and it comes out in unexpected places. Serious cavers are often cave mappers. When cavers explore, they map the caves to produce a record of where the cave goes, which is useful to future cavers and also to people who will likely never set foot underground. That's something that's very, very important these days uh, with, with the development going on in karst areas, is to know where the caves really are. There's numerous caves in and around the city of Lewisburg, and Lewisburg is developing uh, with uh, all kinds of commercial development and housing developments. And we've been able to show the city where the caves run and, and where the inputs are for the water, and, and uh, it's helped a whole lot in planning. One of West Virginia's premier cave explorers is Bob Hanley of Rennick. He's been caving for about as long as anyone in the state. This cave was my first cave uh, back in 1937 when I was nine years old. When I first went in here, we used pine knots for torches. You'd take a pine board and cut the knot out of it and have a handle about 16, 18 inches long and light the knot and it would burn for an hour or so. Hanley has also been personally responsible for discovering miles and miles of cave passageways. A great deal of Oregon Cave, we were the first ones ever to set foot on. And uh, there were places we had to move rocks to get through or, or dig out a, a clay plug, a clay and sand plug to get through. Uh, but it just kept going. And there is still unexplored cave in Oregon Cave. It's, it's not been completely worked out, but the, the parts of the cave that aren't explored are very difficult to get to. Will the number of known caves in West Virginia rise above the 4,300 already documented? I would say that we'll at least double that one of these days and we may triple it, who knows? And there's a lot of area that uh, holds promise yet. Unfortunately, all of the you know, easy entrances have been found. And we're not going to find too many caves where we can just walk right in. We'll, the, the caves that are going to be found from now on are going to be small holes that we're going to have to enlarge to get into or you know, work at, but they're there. And all of us cavers are eager to find that new cave and be the first to explore where no one has ever set foot before. 
For Outlook, I'm Chuck Frostick.